Hi, I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads. And I have a plan for this week, a grand plan. Uh, my plan is to read Poor Things by Alistair Green. Because I have been saying for, I don't know how long I've been saying that I was gonna read this book. And in the time since I had said I was gonna read this book, I have read two other books by this author the film exists. I now have a copy of the book with the film cover on it and I have to read it. I really have to. I have heard from so many, like, you know when you have a friend who tells you you're going to love a book and you know that that friend knows what you do and do not like to read and you're like, you're a valuable source of recommendations. Like a friend who just knows what you like. Well, I have had multiple friends like that recommend this book to me and I'm like, can't all be wrong. You, you, one person can be wrong, sure. All of them wrong? I think not. So I'm hopeful going into this book. This book's kind of been everywhere recently. Well, not the book. There's a film adaptation and it's won... Has it won awards or has Emma Stone won awards? I don't know. I don't really check who wins awards for things. Um, but this book has been turned into a film. The film seems to be everywhere in that I'm seeing it everywhere. But in case you don't know what this book is about, this book tells the story of a pregnant suicide victim in Victorian Glasgow who is brought back to life by a scientist. And that scientist, for reasons of their own, <laughs> um, replaces her brain with that of her unborn child. She then navigates her way through Victorian society as a woman who acts very, very differently to how to what is expected of a woman of her standing. This is a Frankenstein reimagining and it comes from the, the brain of one of Scotland's, and I say this with love and respect and admiration, uh, one of Scotland's strangest literary minds. This will be my third book by Alistair Gray and I'm excited. I am going in knowing very little about the plot other than basic blurb that I've just given you there. And that's kind of my preferred way to go into a book. I don't want to know a lot about it because I want to be wowed. I want to be, I want to be shocked. I don't want to know what, I don't want to know what I'm getting myself into. This vlog is going to be totally spoiler free. There is, I'm not going to say anything that isn't widely available on a book site, book sites, places where you can buy books, um, or anything that's you know, not being featured in an advert or a trailer for the film. So there will be no spoilers here. I have so far only read the introduction of this book. And I, upon reading the introduction of this book, I declare to my partner that I think this book is going to be a five star read. I haven't had a five star read this year so far, this year. <laughs> I mean, it's true, but you know, it's still January. <laughs> You know, there's time. There's time to have a five star, but I kind of feel a little, I don't know, itchy when I haven't had a five star read yet. It just feels like, are they never gonna come? But I feel like I started reading this, and I just got that vibe. And those those vibes are uh, that of weird, wacky, and wonderful. <laughs> um, I'm trying not to get too excited about it because I don't want to hype the book too much in my brain, start reading it and then be like, ah, oh, thought it was going to be something else. But I'm excited. I'm looking forward to continuing with this book. And the book started in a similar way to another Alistair Gray book that I have read before. And it gives a, a factual account of all these records and how these came to be in Alistair Gray's hands because he edited these factual records together to create this book. And the author does this where he basically gaslights you into thinking something's real. And and you know, you know it's a work of fiction, like you know, but you still think, is it? Maybe it's not. And <laughs> the amount of people I googled just to confirm that this book definitely 100% was fiction. <laughs> And it is, it is not real. But so early in the book, I was like, is it? It can't be. 
and it just had me doubting what I know to make sense. <laughs> so I'm excited to go in um, and see how it is. We have had a little bit of snow so I'm definitely going to be staying in this week. My old lady lungs don't like going outside uh, but the snow is very pretty to look at. So I will report back with updates and oh let me know in the comments if you think that I am gonna love it and give it five stars. Oh, I've got a hopeful heart. Um, I will report back soon. <laughs>I'm tabbing but I never know what I meant to tab I just tab bits that I like is that how you're supposed to tab a book is there a specific way that you're supposed to tab a book because I don't know I just tab the little bits that make me think or make me chuckle the most and think about but I am halfway through I'm absolutely loving the book. I'm loving Bella as a character. She's our main character. So it's a good thing that I like her. And because I've read a few books by this author before, I'm a little, I'm a little bit too, I'm a little cautious of saying too much about my thoughts about this book until I've gotten to the end. Because the last few books I've read by Alistair Gray have just been utterly chaotic, just chaotic madness but like in a really good way <laughs> I actually find it really strange that I am, <laughs> I've got a grasp of the plot of this book which I didn't think would happen after reading books by him before I feel this is an excellent first read by Alistair Gray it's my third I wish I'd started with this one but I am loving it so far and I'm very excited to continue with it but just a little update today because I nothing else has happened. I, I've read a book, it's good, we've had snow, there's a weird noise outside, but mainly I've just been working. So very boring. <laughs> I actually think the most exciting thing that's happened today is um is that this white streak of my hair is doing something fun. Um that's it. <laughs> I will come back with more updates when I have finished this book and then I think I've got time to read another one but we shall see. I'll report back probably when there might be some daylight. What a treat! really quick update. I am still loving this book. Oh, so good. Um, I was planning this week to read, as I am trying to read, 24 books set in 24 countries, written by authors from those countries. I was planning to have this vlog be about my two countries for January. However, that's not going to happen. It's just going to be about poor things. And my goal was to cook or bake something from that country. However, I am a terrible baker. Awful. You could blame the fact that our oven is old. 
the gas oven can't hold the heat it just plummets we've got an inside thermometer which confirms that it's not my fault but I'm also just an awful baker I don't like I'm a good cook I'm a really good cook like not in a boastful way it's just fact <laughs> but when it comes to baking with the exception of sticky toffee pudding which I make the best <laughs> and gingerbread I make the best gingerbread cookies as well but other than those two things, I cannot, I don't bake well and I don't enjoy doing it. So I, <laughs> but I did want to make something Scottish, I wanted to make a Scottish delicacy in homage of reading Poor Things, which is a Scottish, you know, classic book. And I made two things, one of which I haven't taken any footage of because it's so, it's not pretty. I made rumbledy thumps which is one of my favourite Scottish dishes. Um, there are a myriad of regional variations of it. Um, Rumbledy thumps is from the Scottish borders, which is where I'm from. And it's basically mashed potato with um, caramelised onions and cabbage. And I top it with cheese. Um, and I topped it with a sheep's milk cheese because, you know, can't eat cow's milk, can I? Um, and it's absolutely delicious, but it, it's not pretty. It doesn't look pretty. <laughs> so I've been eating that over the last week and oh, it makes my heart so happy. But I did make Scottish macaroons. But I made a key error. So basically Scottish macaroons are made from potatoes. The, the secret ingredient is tatty. Um, so it's just a mashed potato that you don't put any butter or anything in. Just normal boiled potato, mash, mash, mash. And then you add a ton of icing sugar. Um, not a metric ton, but we're getting close. And then it gets coated in chocolate and coconut, toasted coconut, because that makes it even better. And then you have to freeze it so that it just sets and then cut it. Now the key error I made here was that I froze it and forgot about it for two days. And Oh, who could have foreseen that I could not cut through it? <laughs> it, was, it was frozen solid. But we left it for a bit and then my partner, he cut through it because I thought I was going to break a knife trying to hack bits off of it. It is so delicious. It tastes exactly like we used to make it in school before Jamie Oliver showed up and told us we couldn't do things. Um, we used to make it and it was so tasty and so easy to make, but it's so sweet. And like I can have a teeny little bit of it and then I'm like oh I need like some fruit or something <laughs> too sweet but that was my little treat that I made to eat along with poor things and yeah I just wanted to come and let you know that my plan was I was gonna bake read a book from a country and I was planning to do that for two countries <laughs> in this vlog but that's not gonna happen it's just gonna be one but seeing as it's Scotland which is the country I live in and that I love, I'm okay with this. <laughs> but when I'm when I report back next time, there will be book updates. There will. And I will have eaten many, many macaroons. <laughs>one of my lovely stepkids. So I haven't done a great deal this week but I did finish Poor Things and ding 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 the uh, five star um, alarm. I don't know it's not a thing. Um, it was right because I love this book. This was such an easy five star rating to give. Like I didn't need to think about it. I knew like I'd known from the beginning and all throughout the book, I just loved it. It had to get five stars. The subject of this book, Bella Baxter, I absolutely adored. However, something, it was very strange because I loved the main character, but I also didn't know the main character because the entire book is told through other characters' perspectives. The main perspectives that we have are Godwin Baxter, who is a doctor and kind of a scientist, he basically created Bella and he views her in a sort of fatherly way. Like he just wants to care for her and protect her, just wants the best for her. And he is a really interesting guy in his own right. He's very 
unusual in appearance. He's a very large man with very tiny fingers and he's a really talented doctor but because of his appearance people are kind of terrified of him and don't really want him being their doctor. So he tends to help uh, poorer people who don't really have too much of a choice in who their doctor is and he also does a lot of veterinary work caring for animals. Although we could argue that some of the care that he does is not for the best interests of the animals in question. He also absolutely hates physical touch. He is not, not one for physical affection. We have Archibald McCandless, who's basically the closest thing that Godwin has to a friend. He's also Bella's fiance. He fell in love at first sight and he is also a doctor. He has come from a working class background and worked his way up through Victorian society which was very exclusionary and you know he has worked his butt off in order to rise through the ranks of Victorian society. We also have Duncan Wedderburn who is a lawyer and a scoundrel and <laughs> a Lothario and just a cad but in, in a really entertaining way. And each of these men love Bella in their own way, but very different ways. And it's really interesting seeing this vivacious and just so lovable character through these different perspectives. A huge part of this book actually surrounded Bella's adventure, her sort of honeymoon, if you will, where she goes traveling. During her travels, she learns a lot about herself and who she is, what she wants from life. Because she had such a, a young brain, she wasn't sort of tied by Victorian expectations, societal expectations that, that most other Victorian women would have been. Her sexual appetite alone would have caused many a Victorian woman to faint and did terrify many a Victorian man. But she wasn't apologetic for her, her urges and for the things that she wanted out of life. She was truly just a, a free individual and she was just living her best life and I love that for her. She was a lovable, chaotic, just a tornado of a woman. Everybody, you know, everybody warmed towards her. She was so endearing and her, her attitude was so refreshing, even though it was just so out of the ordinary for a woman in this time period. I have absolutely no doubt that where Bella from a different class in society that this would be a very very different tale. If she was a working class woman there's absolutely no way that she would have been living her best life like this Bella was and I don't think people would have been quite as endeared to her at this you know in this period of time and I don't think that as many people would have listened to her so I think that her her social standing really helped her to be able to vocalize her feelings. A huge part of Bella's character I would say there were two huge parts of Bella's character. Her very, very strong sexual appetite, but also her kindness and her empathy. She loved Godwin absolutely regardless of his appearance. She loved him for who he was and what he did for his actions. She had also helped Godwin in his basically veterinary surgery where she was just all about caring for the animals, helping them to get better and she wanted to help animals and people. On her travels she was exposed to people who lived differently and she was exposed to oppression and she was just in bits trying to save people, trying to bring everybody to her hotel to look after them. And she just couldn't understand why people were not treated with kindness and and respect and why people just let that happen. She was just so taken aback by the injustices that she had seen that other people had just gone, ah, well, that's what happens. And she just wanted to change the world and, and make it a better place and just help people. I think it's so important that this, this book took place in the Victorian era. As a woman, she had absolutely no power at, at all, really. And she was just so, you know, powerless to make a change. But the world was changing for those with 
high social standing anyway and there were opportunities for her to start making a change which is all she really wanted she wanted to be in a position to help other people in the world and i just thought it was just such a beautiful goal for her to have was just she was so selfless she just wanted the best for people and she didn't want anybody to suffer and you know i, I loved her <laughs> she had as one would probably expect quite a childlike view of the world and she very much challenged the the perception of well you know that's the way things are she was like well why why does it have to be so her brain was quickly growing up but still had that childlike wonder and, you know, that lack of fear to ask questions that might be difficult to answer. The twist at the end of this book. Oh, I think the twist at the end of this book is one of the greatest twists in literature that I have read in I don't know how long. I did not I didn't see this coming and I gasped. It made me question what I had just read. I didn't know who I could trust. I didn't know what I could trust. And I was left being like, well, I've just loved that book and it was fantastic. And what on earth happened? I think the twist was amazing. I know that they have in the film made a few changes. Uh, I don't think they've got the twist. <laughs> Um, like I know they don't have, I know there are some plot changes and I'm kind of upset about the location changes just because all of Alistair Gray's books really speak of his true love of Scotland and the fact that the film isn't set in Glasgow like the book was. I don't know, it kind of feels rude. <laughs> it kind of feels rude to um, adapt this book and be like ah we're gonna not set it in Glasgow I don't know I've not seen the film it could it could they could have written it in a way that really makes sense but I feel like it was very there were a lot of points during the story where it was very key that it was set in Glasgow and I don't know I'll find out in I don't know a year when I watch the film but if you want to read Alistair Gray I would highly recommend starting with Poor Things. I didn't and I didn't grow to love his writing style until this book when I got it. I finally got it and I think that this is the perfect book to start with. I started with A History Maker and then I went on to Lanark which is like Lanark is massive. So this is Lanark. It's it's so much bigger. Um, so I recommend starting with this one. It's also, you know, a Frankenstein retelling that I feel like there's that little bit of familiarity that really lets you just enjoy the absolute chaos that is Alistair Gray's writing. And I say that in the best, the best sort of way. Let me know if you've read this one, what you thought of it, or if you've seen the film. Let me know if you've seen the film and if you like it, because I want to like it and I want to see it. I'm not going to see it right now. I'll wait. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye!